Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning and Finance. In this last section of the lecture, we want to look at some non-mathematical topics uh, related to the usage of machine learning and artificial intelligence in financial applications. And we'll start in this video with RegTech and subtech. So what are these? Well, we start with RegTech, which is probably more common than subtech. RegTech is the use of AI and ML in the management of regulatory processes for the financial industry within the financial industry. So actually, this is uh, the case when banks, insurance companies, financial service providers use machine learning and artificial intelligence to speed up, to improve, to make more efficient their processes, internal processes to comply with regulatory um, filings, to comply with uh, laws and regulations. And thus the main functions are regulatory monitoring, regulatory reporting and regulatory compliance. Put differently, every time a bank, a financial institution, an insurance company uses AI and or ML in order to um, improve regulatory processes internally. This is what we call RegTech. And why is this, um, why do we even have a special name for this like RegTech? Because many regulatory processes have become more and more complex um, in reality. Uh, we have more regulations, more supervision of financial institutions um, in the wake of the financial crisis and thus supervisors and regulators are demanding more and more information. Um, there are more and more rules that banks and insurance companies uh, need to stick by and thus um, fulfilling all regulatory um, requirements is actually uh, a full-time job for many, many banks nowadays and they need to hire lawyers and compliance officers and thus um, there's much room for improvement because most of these things, usually supervisory agencies, um, are not that uh, sophisticated when it comes to uh, technology that is being used. Um, so in many cases, um, you will actually hear from practitioners, we have to fill out Excel sheets. Um, you have huge Excel sheets that, for, for example, in um, Solvency 2 in insurance companies, that need to be filled out and sent to regulators and this needs and takes up a lot of time. So in order to speed this up, to make this process more efficient, but also uh, safer, um, you can use artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we have two um, examples down here. These are companies that are offering, there's no advertising, but these are two companies that you actually can find easily uh, via Google search. Um, for example, anti-fraud and risk management for digital transactions, this Identity Mind Global and Trinomy Management of Consent for Customer Service Data. There are numerous other companies and uh, consulting companies also that uh, either um, provide services relate to, related to AI and ML or they provide consulting um, on these topics. Uh, topics. Deloitte, Bearing Point, uh, just to name uh, two companies. So what are the different market segments to get a better feeling of what RegTech uh, encompasses? First of all, uh, profiling and due diligence, that is you collect and integrate data from multiple internal and external sources. And what's your aim? To profile an entity, to confirm the identity of a person of a company or to categorize them according to regulatory requirements. Reporting and dashboards, again, collect integrate data and the aim here is to build standardized reports for management um, or compliance or regulatory purposes. Very often this is the case that, as I mentioned, you have Excel sheets that need to be sent, for example, to IOPA or National Insurance Supervisors and this is where you want reporting to be automatized and to be run much more efficiently and uh, less error prone. Risk analytics, this is where it gets a little more interesting from a business perspective. Um, you collect and integrate data and the aim is to assess the risk of fraud, market abuse or misconduct at the transaction level. So for example, in investment banking, in trading, in the back end uh, and in the middle office, you might want to use AI ML tools 
um, to analyze the transactions and to see whether maybe the company has a too high risk exposure, whether there might be a risk of fraud um, and these thoughts. Dynamic compliance is when you use machine learning methods to facilitate, monitor regulatory changes and in order to ensure a flexible adaptation of your policies, but more importantly of your processes that you have in place. Otherwise, what would happen is that every time something in regulation changes, you need to do this yourself or you need to hire external consultants to change the processes that have been put in place some, kind, some time before that. And market monitoring. You collect, integrate data, and you aim to match market-level adverse outcomes to regulatory or business rules. For example, um, you want to identify poor product performance, market manipulation, etc. We've seen some of these things on the side of supervisors, actually. I'll come to that when we talk about subtech. Um, but obviously, especially banks, investment banks, uh, can do this um, also and themselves. Some numbers. On RegTech. It's usually nowadays still dominated by startups. Um, almost 70% of firms are younger than five years, according to this global RegTech industry report by uh, the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance and EY, at EY Japan. Um, it employs just 44,000 people, but I think this is one part of the financial industry that will grow uh, enormously in the next years because this is one way to move forward to combat the increase in regulatory and supervisory requirements as about well, 5 billion annual revenue and it raises a lot of capital um, in external funding. So what is the market environment? Well, um, market and regulatory environment are rated to be generally favorable to reg tech companies and the pace of regulatory changes has increased ever since the great financial crisis and it will increase even more, especially now uh, after the corona crisis. So um, we have uh, punishments, we have penalties for non-compliance um, with re regulatory rulings and this has led to a surge in the demand for not just compliance officers and experts in uh, compliance and uh, banking and insurance supervision, but of course also for automated and reliable methods uh, to speed these processes up. Some um, information on the top 10 reg tech markets, obviously UK, USA, but also in the European Union, Luxembourg and Switzerland and Ireland, because these are the com uh, countries where we uh, see a lot of um, financial industries and financial service companies and providers uh, having their headquarters within the European Union, or in the case of Switzerland, um, in Switzerland, um, mostly in Zurich and then Ireland, Australia, Singapore, Japan, Germany, France. But uh, obviously the UK and the United States uh, are leading uh, the herd here. Now, who are the clients? Well, um, usually banks. Um, also 61% um, target insurers, but it's mostly about banks because after the great financial crisis, most of the new regulation and um, um, more stringent and uh, strengthened um, supervision and regulation has hit banks. Um, it is also with um, sovereignty too, has it hit insurance companies um, in the European Union. So uh, most of these reg tech firms, they target banks and then insurance companies, but also some uh, do business with fintechs um, because it, it makes sense if they can, uh, if they are startups, financial technology companies, it makes sense to start with automated process at the start um, uh, from the beginning rather than putting up processes uh, that are quite traditional, especially if you're a fintech company. And 58% of those reg tech companies also claim that they have clients outside the financial service sector, which makes sense because large industrial companies usually have less regulation and super and usually no supervision, but most of these companies also have similar problems. For example, the risk of fraud, um, of transactions being fraudulent or uh, erroneous, um, and thus every company, every large industrial company is also on the lookout for automated processes uh, within its finance um, function. So this means there is substantial overlap between what we consider reg tech and later on subtech companies, because when we move to subtech, this is um, actually where um, we are providing services 
to regulators and supervisors. Um, and actually, some of these processes can also be used by the companies again. So what are the technologies and tools used by RegTech companies? Cloud computing, machine learning, predictive data analysis, uh, natural language processing, deep learning, graph analysis, uh, image recognition, we've seen that with the convolutional neural network, biometrics, crypto tokens, virtual reality just a little bit. Um, so it's usually about cloud computing, machine learning, and some related topics. Okay, now regulators. The regulators have to adapt to ever new technology-enabled financial services, which may present a challenge, especially for emerging and developing economics uh, economies. This is why um, some regulators, like BaFin, um, they have come up with something that is called regulatory sandbox. Regulatory sandbox. What is that? It's a formal program that allows certain financial services um, providers. Um, and some business models uh, which are not yet fully compliant with existing laws. And the aim is to learn about the opportunities and risks that a particular innovation in financial technology, for example, carries and to develop evidence-based policy to see what regulators should do and what they should not do. Imagine, for example, the introduction of uh, cryptocurrencies. This is something that has come from the industry, from scientists, and we've seen a surge in cryptocurrencies with Bitcoin obviously being the most prominent. Um, these are usually, um, at, at least at the very start, these weren't regulated at all. This came from the industry and then regulators and supervisors said, okay, we need to think about how to regulate this if we should regulate at all. And this can, for example, be done in a regulatory sandbox in order to allow one type of innovation um, in a limited way and to closely monitor this um, and to see what should be done and what should not be done. Some regulators like the UK uh, FCA actually also have innovation hubs or innovation offices. These are places where innovators and regulators meet to discuss solutions to the challenges to the financial sector. And um, what has been done, for example, in the UK, these were seven tech sprints um, and uh, two-day events including industry um, representatives and innovators and these were for example on regulatory reporting financial service and mental health anti-money laundering and these uh, kinds of topics so this is how um, regulators and the industry try to discuss new ideas uh, when it comes to new technologies and new challenges okay so this is RegTech um, and we'll now in the next video switch to SubTech.